Hello, my name is Emma, and today I am going to teach you some very important expressions and vocabulary about the weekend. I love the weekend. When I'm talking about the weekend, I'm talking about Saturday and Sunday. So, a lot of the times on Fridays and Mondays, people talk about the weekend. So it's very important to know vocabulary and expressions about the weekend because it's such a common part of conversation. So let's look at some examples of weekend vocabulary. So on Friday, and notice I have on, uh, a lot of students make uh, mistakes with this, but the preposition we use with days of the week is the word on. So on Friday, People often ask this question, do you have any plans for the weekend? Do you have any plans for the weekend? Um, or they might not ask, do you have, they might just say, any plans for the weekend? It's a very common question people ask on Fridays. And what they want is for you to talk about your plans for the weekend. What are you going to do on Saturday? What are you going to do on Sunday? Now, another thing you might see on Friday is sometimes people say TGIF, or they might write it somewhere. Um, my sister Audra, who's going to help us in a little bit, and I often text each other this, TGIF. Every Friday we write each other this. What does it mean? It means thank goodness or thank God, it's Friday. We say this because we are so happy it's Friday. No more work, it's the weekend, we can relax. So TGIF. Another expression we might talk about on a Friday is the word long weekend. A long weekend is a weekend that is three days. So it might be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where you have it off work, or it might be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So if you have a three-day weekend, we call that a long weekend. Long weekends are my favorite. I love long weekends. So we talk about this on Friday, we do our thing on the weekend, and then on Monday, most people go back to school or work. And this is often one of the first questions you will hear on Monday. You'll hear, so what did you do this weekend? And notice I have what with an apostrophe and a D. The D here stands for did. So this can also be what did you do this weekend? But in conversation, we often um, use contractions or we shorten words. So what did you do this weekend actually becomes what did you do this weekend? And this is really hard for English language learners um, because, you know, they hear this and they don't realize that what means what did. Okay, so be careful about this. So what did you do this weekend? You might hear somebody ask, how was your weekend? Uh, you might hear this question, did you get up to anything this weekend? The word or the expression get up to is a very common expression and it just means do, okay? So we use it when we're talking about um, activities we did in the past. So did you get up to anything this weekend means did you do anything this weekend? So they have the same meaning. Did you get up to anything this weekend? Did you do anything this weekend? Um, if you hear somebody ask this question, one thing you can say is you can use get up to in your response. You can say, I didn't get up too much. This means I didn't do anything really. I didn't do a lot, nothing special. So I didn't get up too much this weekend. It's funny with this expression because we only use it in the negative. We do not say, I got up to a lot. We would say, I did a lot, but 
in terms of when we use get up to, we only use it in the negative form. I didn't get up to much this weekend. So now we are going to look at some common activities we do on the weekend, and we are going to do a listening activity with my sister, Audra. Okay, so there are many things you can do on the weekend. Uh, I'm going to give some examples of some things I like to do during the weekend. Before I begin, I just wanted to say one thing. There is a difference between British English and American English when we're talking about the weekend. In British English, we can say at the weekend. In North American English, we say on the weekend. So both at or on are correct, depending on where you live and where you're speaking English. So let's get started on common plans we talk about, or common plans uh, for the weekend. Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about is brunch. Brunch is very popular in North America and other countries as well. Brunch is a meal. People often have brunch at restaurants. And if you notice, I've put equals, breakfast plus lunch. So brunch is between breakfast and lunch. It's usually around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And people, especially on Sundays, people often go for brunch, okay? So you can say, um, on Sunday, I had brunch with my family. On Sunday, I had brunch with some friends. So you'll hear people talk a lot about brunch in North America. Another thing people often do, and I do this a lot during the weekend, is we binge on TV shows. So some people have Netflix, some people have Hulu, some people have um, maybe DVDs or um, some show they're watching. When we binge on something, it means we do too much of something. So if you binge on a TV show, it means you watch a lot of episodes of a TV show back to back. So for example, when I was watching Game of Thrones, I binged on Game of Thrones. Sometimes I watched four episodes in a row and my whole Saturday was spent binging on Game of Thrones. <laughs> so this is a common expression you might hear people talk about when they're talking about the weekend. Another thing people often do on the weekend is they run errands. So the past tense of run is ran. So on Saturday, I ran some errands. What does this mean? Well, errands is a big term that covers many different activities. Errands include doing groceries, um, you know, maybe getting a new cell phone charger. It's those little small tasks you have to do. Um, so those are errands. Maybe you have to pay a bill and you have to go somewhere. Instead of saying what each task is, you can just say errands. Okay, so errands is another word for task. What do you have to do on the weekend? I ran some errands. A lot of people meet up with their friends or family. So this means that they see their friends or family. So I can say, on Saturday, I met up with some friends. I went to a BBQ or a barbecue. BBQ is the short form of the word barbecue. Um, we often talk about things we get caught up on. So this might be a new expression. Sometimes in life, we feel like we're behind. Our week is very busy. And so we need to have some time to catch up or to get things done that we didn't have time to get done during the week. So let's look at some examples of things we get caught up on. We can get caught up on schoolwork. So this means during the week, I didn't have time to do some, some schoolwork. Now I have time. So I get caught up on schoolwork. I get caught up on housework. So maybe during the week, I couldn't do my laundry. Now I can, I have time. So I get caught up on housework. Maybe you have a job where you have to do projects during the weekend. You can say, I got caught up on work. For some people during the week, 
they only get five hours of sleep. So maybe they like to sleep late or take naps on the weekend. So they can say, I got caught up on sleep. Many people like to sleep in on the weekend. This means they do not wake up early, they sleep late. So on Saturday, I like to sleep in. And slept is the past tense of sleep. Finally, some people just say they relaxed on the weekend. So now we are going to do a listening activity. I've taught you many words about the weekend. I'm going to bring my sister on and we're going to talk about her weekend and what she does. Okay, so now we are going to practice what we learned. I'd like to invite my sister Audra over here to help us uh, with our conversation. So come on out, Audra. Thank you for being here today. No problem. So Audra, what did you do this weekend? Well, on Saturday, I had a family barbecue and everyone came over. We had burgers and steak and lots and lots of cake. Wow. Did you do anything else on Saturday? I did. I actually went out for coffee with my best friend, Christine, and we did a bit of shopping and it was really, really lovely. Great. And what about on Sunday? What did you get up to on Sunday? So on Sunday, I did something a bit exciting. I went to a sewing class and I made a fabric basket. A fabric basket. Okay. So Audra is going to show us her creation. Let's see what Audra made. Ta-da! <laughs> Not only is she beautiful, but she is very talented. Thank you. <laughs> did you do anything else on Sunday? Uh, I think that was about it for, for Sunday. I do have some errands to do when I get home. I will be doing laundry. Okay. And what about, what time did you wake up during the weekend? Did you sleep in? I did not sleep in. I woke up around 7.30 in the morning, which is quite early. I wish I could have slept in until 11 a.m. That would have been much better. Do you usually sleep in on weekends? I do not. I get up quite early. I normally wake up at 6 a.m. during the week. On weekends, I could say I sleep in until 7.30 a.m. Ideally, I would like to sleep in until 11 a.m. Wow. So my last question for you, Audra, is about brunch. I know my sister Audra loves brunch. Sometimes we go to brunch together. So when do you usually do brunch? Uh, my friend Lou and I often do brunch on the weekends. On Sunday morning, we go out for brunch and we try different places and we get to try many different types of food. All right, well, thank you so much, Audra. Thanks for telling us all about your weekend. No problem, thank you for having me. So thank you for watching. Um, I want to invite you to check out our website at www.ingvid.com. There you can actually do a quiz where you can practice everything you learned today in this video. I'd also like um, to invite you to check out uh, my channel and subscribe to my channel. There you can actually see a lot of other videos on different English uh, topics. Don't forget to ring the bell. Uh, last, Lee, I'd like to invite you to check out my Patreon page at www.teacheremma.com. So thank you for watching and until next time, take care.